to get a positive um, magnitude then, does that mean that the image does, that the image would have to be inverted then? Uh, well, let's talk about that. Remember that uh, the magnitude is completely separate from whether it's upright or inverted. We're just talking about, so yeah, I should say, magnitudes are always positive by, def by definition. Okay. Magnitude just means the absolute value. So if it's inverted, then, then because if it's magnified, then that means that, Let's go through some I, guess it's, I guess it's the negative sign in front of it. That's what can you tell me about this object? Uh, it is magnified by 3, but it's inverted. Magnified and inverted image. Mm -hmm. By the way, what's the magnitude of the magnification here? 3. All right. What can you tell me about this object? That it's half its size. Good, so it shrunk. And like you say, it shrunk. The image is half the size of the object. Uh, upright or inverted? It's inverted. Because it has a negative sign. Now, what's the magnitude of this magnification? One half. Yeah. Okay. So, a magnitude can be positive even if the variable is negative. Because a, a magnitude just means absolute value. You can take the absolute value of a positive number or a negative number. So when I say that a magnitude has to be positive, that's not a science fact. That's just a math fact about magnitude. OK. Um, so again, right now, uh, we're just focusing on magnification. So we're not really talking about whether these are shrunken or inverted. But it could be either shrunk, I, I'm sorry, it could be either inverted or upright. Mm -hmm. uh, any magnified image, whether shrunk, uh, sorry, talk here. Any magnified image, whether upright or inverted, has to have an absolute value for the magnitude that's bigger than 1. So um, the magnitude or absolute value of the image distance has to be greater than the object distance. So the, the upshot of this is, if the image is bigger than the object, that's because the image distance is bigger than the object distance. That's kind of a good slogan. That, uh, they kind of All right. So um, if the image size is bigger than the object size, then the image, that's because the image distance is bigger than the object distance. You can kind of see that from our formulas here again. These are the image sizes, right? This says, so if the image size is bigger than the object size, that must be because the image distance is bigger than the object distance, because these two fractions have to be equal. And again, we can ignore the signs here because we're just focusing on magnitudes. The fact that this has a negative sign and this doesn't isn't going to make any difference here. Uh, if the object distance is, I'm sorry, if the image distance is bigger, that's because the, uh, if the image size is bigger, that's because the image distance is bigger. Okay. okay. All right, so that's just uh, uh, a good fact uh, to know. All right, and uh, just by looking at this picture, uh, is this image magnified or shrunk? You can just see that because you can see that the image arrow is bigger than the object arrow. The reason I drew this was to show you why it makes sense that the farther the image is from the lens, the bigger it will be. You can see the farther we are from the lens, um, the more time it's taken for the rays to converge. So they just, had, um, they just had more time to get further away from the principal axis over here. So the greater the image distance is, you can see the further we're getting away from the mirror, um, the farther down these rays are getting. So it's actually kind of intuitive that if we're able to get a, a, a big distance away from the device for the image distance, then the rays have had time to get far away from this axis over here and they've given us a big image. Whereas if uh, the image distance was very small, then the rays would not have had time to get far away from the axis and then we'd have a very small image. Okay, so this is a, a somewhat intuitive idea that a magnified image comes about. Uh, so anytime, anytime the magnitude of the size, uh, anytime the image's magnitude of size is, is bigger, that's because it's at a greater distance. And we can see that from our picture here. S prime is bigger than S, and the picture shows that that makes H prime bigger than H. This height bigger than this height. Okay. So those are just some important ideas for solving problems. All right, let's see if we can uh, come up with a problem here now. You got this in your notes? I'm going to this now. So.
same size as object. object. All right, and let's say we have a concave mirror. First question is find the object distance. Let's try again. Context. Now the problem should work. So, so if I use this equation. Good. All right. However, remember we want to get into the habit. Before we use the equation, let's use our chart. So what does the chart tell us here? Now, first of all, do we have a converging or diverging device? Um, we said convex. So that means convex means diverging. A convex lens. Mm -hmm. Draw the convex lens. OK, good. Yeah, that's a convex lens. Here's a convex lens. And is this diverging or converging? We uh, draw a couple light rays going through here. How, how would these bend? Uh, towards each other. Yeah, I think it's kind of intuitive mm -hmm. that uh, the lens bends these rays like this, whereas, I don't know, it's kind of intuitive yeah. that a concave lens bends it like this. So this is a converging lens. So this is what the, uh, all right, so we have a convex lens. Uh, and we learned last time that convex lens is our converging. It would be different for a mirror, but for a convex lens, uh, for a convex lens, it's converging. All right, so let's make a note. We have a converging device. We saw last time that you don't really want to work with the terms concave and convex because they're different for lenses and mirrors. You want to translate this into converging and diverging because that means let's use the same diagram for both lenses or mirrors. So where will we be in our diagram now? So we'd be towards the left. Um, yeah, so we'd be in the left-hand region, the converging region, right. but there's three different places here, so where should yeah. we be? So we're, the, we want a real image, so to the left is the focal point. So we know we must be somewhere over here. Here's the places where you can use a converging device and get real images, okay? Um, and then same size as the object. Um, so I know that when you have the same size as the object, it's at when it's twice the focal length. Because um, in the upright, it confuses me. Because in between. 
between two inverted. Oh, don't tell me I still missed the problem. <laughs> My goodness. All right, let's see here. I'll just erase that. Okay. So now what? So I would think that it would be at the twice the focal length. Twice the focal length. Good. 